Hi there, and welcome back to the MakerPipe Masterclass, where we are walking you through the entire process of building a DIY project with MakerPipe connectors and EMT conduit. This is the second episode of the series, and today we will be diving deeper into the idea of building DIY projects with EMT conduit and clamp style connectors from MakerPipe. We're going to be talking about what each of those materials are, where you can find them, and what tools you'll need for building with them, all so you can see how they combine together to create an easy, affordable, and strong building system for pretty much anything you can think of. We know that building things with EMT conduit and maker pipe are likely new concepts for a lot of people. This episode is going to provide you a great foundation for understanding how to use these materials effectively for your DIY builds. Let's start by looking at EMT conduit. EMT conduit is a galvanized steel tubing commonly used for electrical wiring in commercial settings, and it doubles as an excellent DIY building material when combined with connectors from maker pipe. Because it is galvanized, it is corrosion resistant on both the inside and the outside. This is huge for those of you building projects for your garden or just outside in general. Empty conduit is thin walled, which means it's lightweight and easy to work with. You can even bend it by hand with the right tool. Despite its thin walls though, EMT is strong and capable for DIY projects around your home, shop, and garden. You don't have to take my word for it though. Take a look at these impressive community builds that showcase how effective and capable EMT conduit is for all kinds of projects and situations. EMT is readily available in hardware and home improvement stores, making it a go-to choice for your projects. When searching in the store, you'll find it in the electrical aisle in a variety of sizes and usually in a stick of either 5 or 10 feet. The MakerPipe system currently has connectors available for three different EMT conduit trade sizes. The most common size that builders choose for their projects is 3 quarter inch EMT. It provides a fantastic balance between cost and strength. We did some strength testing a while back and a five foot table with basic bracing supported a couple hundred pounds comfortably. With proper bracing and design, you can get a lot out of this ordinary tubing. Here's a few projects where you can see three quarter inch EMT in action. If you're working on a lighter duty project like these, you can save money and still get great value out of half inch EMT conduit. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're building something heavy duty and want some more strength, you can size up your project design to utilize one inch EMT conduit. The thin walled nature of EMT allows it to be cut with simple tools that we will discuss a bit later in this video. This is a game changer for DIY projects because you can effectively cut conduit virtually anywhere without needing power tools or electricity. This means you can build right in your living room or garden or out in the woods. You don't need a whole lot of room to cut conduit and build your projects. You can bring some along on your next camping trip and modify your bed frame or roof rack on the fly. Before we move on to the maker pipe connector system, let's recap EMT conduit. It's readily available at your local hardware or home improvement store. You'll find it in the electrical aisle in a variety of sizes and most likely it'll be sold in 5 or 10 foot lengths. You can easily cut conduit to the dimensions you need with a handheld and portable tool known as the rotating pipe and tube cutter. It's galvanized and corrosion resistant and made of steel which makes it an attractive and capable choice for your DIY projects both indoors and out. As you can see, there are plenty of benefits of this great material, which is why we chose it as the foundation of our connector system. Maker pipe connectors are steel fittings that join pieces of EMT conduit together without any drilling or welding. This is possible because they function as clamps and rely on friction. All of the connectors are made up of at least two pieces that squeeze the conduit and assemble together with nuts and bolts that are included. Each of the connector pieces is designed specifically for the provided hardware to fit precisely. We do this so that the nut will be captured in the pieces which allows you to assemble connectors with a single 5mm hex wrench. We've worked hard to make the process as approachable as possible. It can take a couple of connections to get a rhythm going, but I can assure you that you don't need any special skills to make secure joints with maker pipe and conduit. In addition to not needing special skills, you also don't have to worry about needing a workshop with electricity or power tools to make your project happen. The Humble Allen Key is a very simple and straightforward tool that can be used virtually anywhere, just like the tools that we mentioned for EMT Conduit. All of the connectors that we offer can be found online at MakerPipe.com. There you'll see a wide variety of connections that serve all sorts of different purposes within projects. You've got a few that make up the core of the system. I would put the T connector, the 90, the 180, and the 4 and 5 way connectors in this group. You'll commonly see these joints as the foundation for most projects. I want to put a connection together so you can get an idea of how maker pipe connectors work. I've got a T connector here and it's by far the most versatile and commonly used connection in the system. The T connects two pieces of EMT conduit together like so. Then you just capture the nut on either side and tighten the bolt with a 5mm Allen key. And then just like that you've made a strong joint. Now all of the connectors in the system are made up of different pieces, but they all function the same way and allow you to make fast and simple connections. 
In addition to the core components of the system, you've got the bracing connectors that are crucial for strong and sturdy builds. These are the 45 degree, the adjustable angle hinge, and the adjustable 180 degree connector. You'll see these used to make angled bracing and they are usually what level up DIY projects made with the MT conduit. There are also some other connections that have specific functions and uses. You've got flanges for mounting conduit to flat surfaces. You've got the coupling, which works great for extending builds. Then there's the 135 degree connector, which works well for roof peaks, like you can see in this greenhouse frame. There's all sorts of connectors on the website that you can use to make your builds happen. Later in the Masterclass series, we will have a full episode dedicated to the Maker Pipe connector system. We're gonna walk through each connector, explain their functions, as well as give you examples for how they're used so that you can understand which ones you should select for your project designs. In the meantime, you can check out the individual video overviews for each connector on their page on the website. Next, I want to quickly highlight some other connector features as we continue to expand on the idea of building with conduit and connectors. As I mentioned earlier, EMT conduit is a great material for building outdoor projects. We wanted the maker pipe connector system to be strong and durable just like conduit, so our connections are made of steel as well. We manufacture them in upstate South Carolina with locally sourced materials and partners. We finish all of the maker pipe fittings with a corrosion resistant and UV stable silver zinc coating. They combine with conduit to give you a finished project that is built to last even when exposed to the elements. In addition to maker pipe connectors being strong and durable, they're also very forgiving and extremely modular. If you make a mistake while building, you can get back on track with just a few turns of a hex wrench. This also applies if you want to tweak or modify your project design on the fly or completely change it sometime in the future. Simply take apart the clamps and move them around or repurpose them for a totally new project later on. Now that you know the maker pipe system and EMT conduit a little bit better, let's dive a little deeper into the basic tools that you'll need for cutting conduit and assembling maker pipe connectors. First, let's discuss the tools for cutting EMT conduit. The simplest tool that we recommend is this rotating pipe and tube cutter. This is our go-to recommendation for cutting EMT because it's inexpensive, very approachable, and easy to use. Essentially, you just tighten and rotate it over and over until you cut all the way through the conduit that you're working with. It's made specifically for this process, so it works really well. The only downside I'd say about this cutter is the time it takes to cut a bunch of conduit for a larger project. If you have a time constraint, then you might want to consider other options. Another handheld option is a hacksaw. It's faster overall, but it doesn't make the cleanest of cuts. You want to be careful and make sure that the saw is cutting straight, and you want to deburr the conduit after cutting it. I'll talk more on that shortly. The Milwaukee Portable Bandsaw is a fantastic option if speed and clean cuts are a priority. It's also designed for the process of cutting pipes and tubes, so it works really well. We use it for projects with lots of cutting, and it's really worth it in my opinion if you're building with conduit regularly. You do have to be careful when cutting to make sure that it cuts straight, but other than that and the cost, it's a really great option. We have a full review of this saw as well as a video walkthrough of different cutting tool options. I'll link both of those down below if you want to check them out. Of course, before you can make your cuts, you will need a marker and tape measure to mark the desired measurements. I recommend using a dry erase marker for this process because it's easy to wipe off after you finish your cut, which will help you keep the tubes in your project looking nice and clean. After you finish cutting the conduit pieces for your project, you'll likely want to clean up the ends of the tubes unless you're using some of the plastic end caps that we sell. Another reason that I like to recommend the rotating pipe and tube cutter is because it has a fold out deburring tool that works surprisingly well with some patience and pressure. This helps prevent overly sharp edges, looks good, and also helps if you're installing accessories like the threaded pipe inserts into your conduit ends. I've tested and recommended a few different ones in a video that I'll link down below, but I can save you some time and recommend this one that is meant to be used with a drill or impact. It's highly effective and works way better than any other option that I've tried. It just requires a bit of an investment, especially if you don't have a power drill already. If you're using a hacksaw to cut your conduit, I definitely recommend getting this to really smooth out the edges. Another optional tool that you can use in your projects is the handheld tubing bender. Builders will use this for all kinds of different structural and aesthetic purposes. We will go into more detail about this in a later episode, but for now just know that you can use it for all sorts of cool things in your EMT conduit projects. Once you're ready to assemble connections, you'll just need a 5mm hex wrench and there are a few different options to choose from. The basic L-shaped Allen key works great for builds, especially if you already have one on hand. The short T-handle hex wrench is a great step up because it gives you some extra leverage. The longer version of the T-handle is really great if you're building within a tight space. The ball on the end makes those hard to reach connections much easier to complete. There's also a short and long 5mm hex socket that you can use when building. They have the same features as their T-handle counterparts, but they utilize a ratchet wrench. All of these hex wrench options get the job done and are more than capable. It just comes down to your preference and those nuanced situations where one might be more beneficial than another. 
With a marker, tape measure, cutter, and hex wrench, you're ready to go in most situations. There are, of course, other scenarios where additional tools will be needed. There's the bender, of course, but you might find that you need different tools for the accessories or hacks that you're using in your builds. For example, if you're securing a tabletop or shelf to a steel frame that you've made, then you'll likely want a power drill and a bit, or at the very least, a screwdriver. Or if you're installing threaded pipe inserts into the conduit in your build, then you'll need a hammer or vise. Of course, I don't know exactly what accessories each and every one of you will be using, so I can't go into much more detail. But I just wanted to make sure to remind you that you'll likely use other tools after you've completed your main framework with EMT and connectors. In upcoming episodes, we're going to dive deeper into how to use the tools that we've mentioned today to effectively build projects. We're also going to provide a full walkthrough of the MakerPipe connector system later on in the series. This will explore and explain each connector type, how they assemble, and how to use them in your builds. As always, if you have any specific questions or need some assistance, don't hesitate to let us know, and we will do what we can to help. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming episodes, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.